Hello everyone, welcome to learn data structures and algorithm in Python course. In the previous lecture, we have seen uh, what is basically sliding window technique and why do we need sliding window technique and how to uh, identify a problem that could be solved in sliding window technique. And at last to help solve some basic problem, right? Now in today's lecture, we'll be solving a lead code problem called contents duplicate. So first, let's see the problem description. You'll be given an integer array nums. So here is an array given, integer array. Okay, here you can see. And an integer k. Okay, an integer k. And you have to return true if there are two distinct indices, i and j, in this array, such that nums of i equals to equals to nums of j. And absolute of i minus j less than equals to k. Now, what is the problem is saying? Let's say this is an uh, array. Uh, let's put the indexes here. Let's say index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. And you will be given an k, k equals to 3, and puts and some condition apps of i minus j less than equals to k. So, this is the condition. That means what you have to do. <clears throat> any sub array so let's say i'll consider this sub array and this sub array so you'll be given a size so in this size sub array you have to find is there any element are repetitive or not if you find that any element is repetitive in this uh, particular sub array then you have to immediately return true otherwise you will be returning false. So you will be given a size of a sub array and you will be given an array. Then you have to find if any elements are present in that particular size or not. So this is the problem. Now how to find what will be the size of sub array? Because they are not telling this is the size of the sub array. They are telling this is basically a constant and this is our condition. Now how to find what will be the size of our sub array? Let's say k equals to 3. Okay. Now, if you assume i equals to 0, i equals to 0. Now, absolute of i minus j, it should be k, right? It should be k. Now, if k equals to 3, i equals to 0, what will be the zth value? It will be 3, right? It will be 3. Okay. So, 0 minus 3 equals to minus 3, absolute of that equals to 3. Now, let's say, I will consider a sub array from this 0 to 3. If k equals to 3, I have to consider from 0 to 3. Now tell me what will be the size of the sub array. It will be basically 4, right? It will be basically 4. So size will be k plus 1. I hope now you have understood this. Now how to check the elements are repetitive or not? How to find that? Now the brute force approach could be first we have to go through each sub array of this size. Okay. So size could be less than equals to k. So let's say I consider this size, right? Now if element is repetitive in this particular sub array, then also I will return true. Right. Now the brute force approach could be let's say I'll take a sub array of size this k plus 1. Okay. Now for each sub array, I will compare the element with the remaining ones. Then if I find any element is present, then I will return just true. So this approach is not optimized, right? Then another solution could be we can sort the array. Then we can compare the consecutive elements. That we can also do. Now let's see how we can do this using sliding window technique. So to do that, <coughs> how we can do that? To do that, we have to take an extra space. We have to take an extra space. Why extra space? Because, because how do we how do we record this that this element is already present or not already in the sub array or not? For that, we'll take another data structure called set. We'll take help of set. Now let's see how we can do that. Okay, let's take a set. Okay. Now, what we'll do, we'll be doing this in 
a one shot strike in one single follow let's say first i am at zero thin index now i will check is i am exceeding k right am i exceeding k no right then what we'll do we'll just put this one into eight okay this is done then i'll be move my pointer move my pointer to here i will be here okay now what will check i'll check for this element is this element present in this set or not so this is the key is this element present in this set or not it is not right so then what we'll do i'll just put two here okay now this is done now this is done the next i'll be at here okay now i will check is this element already in the set or not no right then i will put and also i will check am i exceeding this size am i exceeding this size how do i check how do i check this simply i have to just check if i if i greater than k or not that i can check if i exceed then what will do then what will do let's see okay let's say we are at 2 and we are not exceeding this size okay then what we'll do we'll check if this element is already present here or not it is not then what we'll do we'll put this element now we'll move our pointer okay we'll move our pointer here so i will be 4 sorry i will be 3 right i will be 3 here okay now we'll check now we'll check is i greater than k is i greater than k what is the value of k 3 right no i is not greater than k that means we are within this k plus 1 size right in this sub array also already and we'll check is 1 already present in this set because all the elements all the elements present in this sub array those are already in this set those are already in this set so what we'll basically we'll do will store the elements inside this sub array only right so that is the our purpose only the elements in this sub array will be storing in this set okay now let's say we are at this point so we'll check is one already present in the set we'll see that yes one already present then immediately we'll return true that means there are duplicate element present in this particular size right in this particular size now let's say there is some another element let's say 10 then what we'll do then we'll just put 10 here okay we'll just put 10 here then what we'll do we'll move our pointer from here to here i will be 4 now we'll check now currently i is 4 k is 3 now is 4 greater than 3 yes right that means we are exceeding the window size right we are exceeding the window size what is the size of the window 4 3 plus 1 equals to 4 now we are considering the 5 element so now what we have to do we have to change our window size we have to change our window size right we'll be checking the element for this particular size only now when we change our pointer one thing we have to do we have to remove this element right the last element we have to remove now how we can check how we can remove this for that we have to check first first we have to check for this condition if i greater than k then what we'll do we'll just from this set we just discard what we'll discard we'll discard uh, let's say error of error of i minus k plus 1 why k plus 1 why k plus 1 because the size is k plus 1 in the previous problem we also have solved this problem right we have seen also so let's say i equals to 4 then what is the so i equals to 4 then what is the value of k k is 3 and plus 1 so that means error of 0 right error of 0 means array 0 will be removing from this set so let's remove this okay 
let's remove here and remove from here also let's remove this out okay now what is the next thing now we'll check is 4 already present here no right then what we'll do we'll just put simply 4 here and we'll move our pointer okay from sorry from here to here we'll move our pointer okay now i'll be 5 okay then similarly we have to remove the last element we have to remove our last element now the window will be this now the window will be this from 3 to 6 then here also we have to check so first we have to remove the 2 we have to remove the 2 by applying this condition now currently i is 5 k is 3 so we'll be removing the this first element from this set then we'll check is 6 present in this set or not no right 6 is not present okay then we'll put 6 here we'll put 6 here and then we'll be moving this pointer and this also then i will be here and we'll be dealing with this window okay and we'll check first we'll be removing three so let's say we'll remove three and we'll check if five present in this array or not in this set or not no right then we'll just add five here then what we'll do we'll just move to the next pointer here i equals to seven last thing and also then we'll be removing this 10 right from here so yeah we'll be removing 10 from here and the window will be here so let's remove 10 from here and now we'll check is 9 present here or not 9 is not present here right then we can say that i have tried through all the subarray and i have not find anything right any elemental duplicate then only we can return we can return false here we can return false here otherwise let's say it is not 9 it is 6 it is 6 now we'll check is 6 present here in the set and we'll find yes 6 is present then immediately we'll return true okay so this is how we could solve this problem now let's see how we can solve this so to solve this first we have to consider a set now you can take set or you can take dictionary whatever you want so let's take let's take name it say as equals to new set okay then okay we have to run one follow for that we have to calculate the length of the array so length will be len of nums right nums then we'll be running one for loop for i in range will be uh, n sorry okay yeah then what we'll do first we'll check first we'll check for this condition if the window size is exceeding or not so if our element i is greater than is greater than k then what we'll do we'll just remove the previous element from the set right so is dot discard what will discard nums of i minus k plus 1 okay and then what we'll do we'll check if our current element nums of i is present in set or not and for that we have to check if nums of i in s then what we'll do we'll just immediately return yes there are duplicate elements present so return true okay and otherwise what we'll do we'll just add this item sorry is dot add nums of i okay and at last if we don't find anything we'll just return false okay so this is our solution let's run it and you can see this is accepted let's submit it yes got a submission right so that's how we can solve this in o of n time complexity okay 
so and the space complexity for this algorithm is o of n okay so time complexity is o of n and space complexity is also o of n so hope you have understood the problem so that's it for today's lecture thank you